didn't press what floor we're going on. <laughs> oh, dude. I was like, this is so constant. Oh, didn't see you guys there. Sorry. Hi, my name is Tiffany Lee, and I am a student at Baton Rouge High. Um, I'm also enrolled in a class called Art History AP, and this is a project for that class. Um, this project is um, going to be about me telling you guys about a piece that I uh, saw over at the, at the LSU Art Museum. Um, if you guys look around the channel earlier, most of the students went to Noma, but I was too cheap. Just kidding. I had three tests that day. Anyway, let's go on to the uh, piece. Alright, so my piece is called Woman Pulling a Donkey. N not that piece. That one. All right. So my um, artwork is called Silhouette for the Shat Noir Shadow Theater, Woman Pulling a Donkey. Unidentified artist, circa 1890, made of zinc metal sheets. And I got all of my information from www.nyu.edu. All right. So let's talk about the F2C2 about this piece. So um, as you can tell, form-wise, uh, there should be your, like, there should be a lot of attention on the woman. And I think this is because of two main things. Um, firstly, it's because the entire piece is placed at slopes. And um, it might not be obvious at first, but if you look at it for a while, it comes out. Um, starting from the man's bindle, you go down and it places your direction towards the donkey's head. And from there, it goes on to the woman. And secondly, because of the spacing. Um, the man and the donkey seem to be really connected with each other and separated from the woman. There's a lot of space between each of these um, individual characters, um, especially between the man and the donkey and the woman. And that leads your sole direction and sole attention on the woman herself, which I think is the main component of this piece. Um, for content, um, this piece is made out of zinc metal sheets, which I think helps a lot with the exactness. Um, this piece is used for shadow theater, and so you have to really depict those puppets um, exactly. Um, if you guys don't know what shadow puppeting is, here's a picture. There you go, there it is. Alright, so that's just, that's, that's your shadow puppet. Um, back to the piece. Alright. So, um, as I said, it really helps with the exactness of this piece that it's made of metal. Um, in the beginning of French Shadow Theater, most of the puppets were made of cardboard, which even if you carve it really well, it would still be not as exact as metal sheets. Um, you can tell the detail because of like the texture of the man's leg on the donkey. If you guys see it really close, um, you can tell that he has his legs on the donkey and they're not just one um, character. Um, another thing is that you can definitely tell that it's a man and a woman separately because of the small details that the artist plays into this piece, um, such as the top hat for the man, and you can definitely tell that he's a man. You can kind of tell that he has kind of like a pointed chin that can be uh, speculated to be a beard, and also for the woman, she has a bun um, hairdo on her head and also her bosom. You can definitely tell that's a woman. And a donkey, that looks like a donkey. <laughs> um, definitely looks like a donkey. Alright, so let's talk about the function of this piece. I believe that this piece has two main functions, one being a performance function and the other one being a social function. So the reason why it's a, a performance function is obviously because it was used in the Chat Noir Shadow Theater, which is a very famous shadow theater in France. And um, in those shadow theaters, this is where the social function comes in. This is where they would talk about um, folk tales or like everyday lives during this uh, this show and um, also this is also a social piece because it tells about the role of women and how they were perceived back in that time period. Um, we can definitely see how lowly they were thought of because she's pulling a donkey and a man where you know usually the donkey would be pulling everyone together but she's even seen less than a an animal and we can definitely see how women are being played out to be, you know, subservient to men and, um, you know, even less than um, animals. Okay, so on to context. So the shadow theater was originated in China where um, people would be using the same concept of telling folk stories and everyday lives to people, but this time their puppets were made out of paper. Um, thicker paper than the paper screen that they were used to do the silhouettes with. But yeah, they were made out of paper. 
And so what happened was <laughs> that France came over to China and that they took this idea and they took it back to France. But uh, they did it with cardboard instead to make an even more darker silhouette come out of the screen. Um, they use a darker and thicker material. So that's what they did. Um, so yeah, the main objective of the show, like I was telling you guys about earlier, was that this was to you know tell about everyday lives and folk tales during that time. And a big a big part of Chat Noir or like any shadow theater back in France was that they created these nightclubs where people would come together and they would you know have a couple of drinks and they would always have shows going on and the most prominent shows were the shadow uh, shadow theater shows that went on during these um, nightclubs um, and that's why these audiences that the shadow theater would bring could be up to like a couple people in like a local bar to like a couple of hundred people in the even bigger theater. So that's how shadow theater got into its um got into um a really a really big part of French culture. And it's actually still really big in France and also really big in China as well. Um and I know, and I know a bunch of other uh, places in Asia and Europe do shadow theater and they talk about their own lives um, and their own stories too in those uh, shows. Alright, so the reason why I chose this piece was definitely because of the woman. It really relates back on what we talked about in global uh, prehistory and African art and how like uh, women were seen as being you know less than men and I really thought that stood out to me and how it could uh, help me you know, relate this artwork back into um, what we learned previously because most of the art found in LSU uh, Art Museum was really modern contemporary art and I really couldn't find anything that really stuck out but this one definitely did it and um, so yeah as I was talking about earlier about the women roles so I picked this piece because of the woman and how she was seen as low but not just because of that but be also because that this uh, artwork was able to tell me like a story or like how things were perceived back then so like just like how we talked about in um, global prehistory about the um, what was it the um, the Venus of Willenorf or something like that <laughs> I don't know if I said it right but yeah the Venus of Willenorf how you know they were um, it was speculated to be a fertility um, symbol or like early pornography or something like that. It really tells us how like women were thought of. And like this piece being like a woman pulling a donkey and a man, um, it, seems, it shows us how like low women were thought to be. So I thought those two really went together and it kind of did a good job for me. It was easy to, you know, just to relate that back to gender roles, but it really was a big thing. You know, gender roles really plays out throughout history and it's really nice for people to, um, to kind of record it, like how it's been progressing or declining by the artwork that they produce. So that's why I chose this piece. And um, so yeah, that wraps up my F2C2 for this plate for this piece. Um, thank you for enjoying.